17 U.S.C. 107 federal law allows citizens to use copyrighted media for fair use. That is criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody. Kuma, your house. We are put you over there, sir. We are loose in the air. Arrive of you, of your friend. Oh, your house. Kuma, let your enemies be scattered, and let those that hate thee flee from before thee. Let all of Yashara, Yisrael, who love, worship, and praise Yahweh. Give him thanks by saying hallelujah. Shalom, everyone, and welcome to Into All Truth. My name is Rachel. We welcome donations, and we thank you, everyone, for donations that you made for calendars and cookbooks. Make a donation of $35 or more at livelightwell.com, and you'll go get both the calendar and the Hebraic lifestyle Chaya Eat Life and Fast book. And I pray that as you listen to this study that the Ruach HaKodesh will lead you into all truth and show you things to come. Baruch Atah Kulam in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. All an identity A lock without a key The first thing I want to say to begin with is that when I do these illustrations and I'm talking about people groups, uh, fallen angel seed, uh, head shapes, all of these things, remember that Yah said that Israel would be cut off. Israel was cut off for sinning wickedly for, for their own sin. All right, so just keep that in mind then, of course. But the nations forwarded the affliction, and they numbered too many to be destroyed beyond what Yah had numbered. So they're going into judgment for that. Also, I'm coming to this theory that, you know, Japheth's rule probably ended by the time we got to America, and it's really the fallen angel who've taken over the last leg of this rulership. But regardless... Yah's salvation is offered in Yahusha to whosoever shall believe. And so when I'm making these classifications, good chance most people, except for the pure, pure Hebrews, have got this fallen angel seed mixed in, can manifest itself in straight hair, or it can manifest itself in light skin or light eyes, etc. Uh, but still, when Yah did this, he considered these people to be purely bleached out, just as when you are bleached out from uh, getting leprosy, really. And so you're clean once you're on the other side of it, and you are, in particular, that other thing rather than the first thing. So you've gone now from black to white. So that is the paradigm we're dealing with within scripture. And so the salvation is offered to whosoever shall. And so if you're Israel or you're any of these other nations and you are worshiping pyramids or the snake, calling yourself Israel and doing all those things and doing witchcraft and astrology and, you know, all of these things outside of scripture, because you should know scripture. So I keep saying, you know, because you should know scripture if you don't then you're probably not Israel because you're, you're not being oriented towards it. Your heart and mind should be pulling you and drawing you towards it. So when I'm talking about these people groups and the stolen identities, the J Japheth and these other ones got the identity for a season, for a reason, for salvation and grafting in. When I talk about, for example, you know, marrying the other nations and not marrying them now, well, that season is now over. But don't cut off your partner from another nation because when they were Israel and you were in your state of fallen dishonor, they honored you by marrying you because you were, had fallen out with Yah. So 
that doesn't mean cast them away. And if you're a Gentile, it doesn't mean you're cast away. But you, if you're a Gentile, you can't be running around, you know, thinking that Israel is not the seed and that we're all equal either, which is what the Masons teach. Well, we're all just equal. And no, Yah has a set apart people. And that's it. And if you are Israel or if you are grafted into Israel, you must know and believe that. In other words, you're not believing the truth. So when I go into these descriptions, don't take it personally. You're just going to, this is just for people's understanding. I just have to be very kind of clinical about it and surgical about it and impersonal about it because these are facts. I'm just stating facts. I can't mother mama you guys into getting comfortable with this stuff. It is what it is. And it's not necessarily always pleasant. And there's, you know, sin and guilt and blame assigned to various people groups. And the only way you can get into the house of Israel is to confess those sins. And it includes Israel because Israel is falling after all this stuff. So um, this is just purely scientific and helps us to identify the people and identify who's not the people. So uh, let's get into it. So since people are publishing things that they did before I published stuff that I worked on for over a month beforehand, I'll just have to say that I actually did this Head Shapes video October 27th, 2021, and then I saw other people do a video after that, and, um, you know, I recently published the video on the uh, idea that these orphan children were kind of farmed all over the world as, you know, the wheat among the tares, and then there's other people who have published similar videos saying they recorded them earlier. So I guess we're just going to have to do that nowadays instead of giving credit where credit is due. So, um, yeah, I recorded this October 27th. So if you go to any of the top male teacher channels and you see a similar video, I actually recorded mine before them. Kind of like how I, how I recorded my video on the wheat among the tares, the as above, so below, the come up. I actually started working on that over a year ago, so. Yah knows what people did and when. So that being said, there's some teachers who bring out some great information that I use and I refer to because they get into a lot of books and they find them and bring them out, and I really appreciate that. However, I don't always quote or mention people because... I don't like when people are not going from scripture and I don't want to be co-signing with what they're doing. I don't hate these other people. It just makes me very, it incenses me because I think it's absurd to claim to be the true Israel, the true sons of Yah, but not refer to the book at all or make it your primary standard. So that is so un-Hebraic, un you should not even claim to be Israel if you're doing any of that. Just just realize you're an Egyptian, that because that's what the Egyptians would do, or the seed of the fallen would do. And so that's, you know, I like to give credit where credit is due, but I get into a bit of a mix because I don't want to be co-signing with what they're doing. So, but yeah, I appreciate the work, you know, because I can't afford a research team. So, yeah, brought me a research team on, on YouTube, so I... My hope and prayer is that the people I do, whose materials I do refer to, like honestly, especially like even Mr. Ahu, I really pray they actually get saved, that they actually seek Yah and his kingdom in Yahusha Hamashiach. So with that being said, let's go on ahead. I kind of believe that indigenous Americans, what they call the Indians, maybe Indians actually, that Columbus wasn't wrong. They were Indians. They were, I believe, the Moabites, very possibly, because they are very different from the Chinese who are um, Sidon and Sino, the sons of Canaan. So they look very different, but there are similarities as well. So, uh, but definitely you're not Israel if you weren't, if your people, the people sitting on the thrones in Europe, didn't look like you. If all the inventors of 
um, the self-oiling steam mentioned, the snot phthalate, the, the gas mask, um, blood transfusion, the light, what, you know, uh, pacemaker, first heart surgery, best music on the planet, top athletes. If that's not your people, if your pe people who look like you aren't currently enslaved in the four corners of the earth, you're not Israel. That's all the signposts of you being Israel. And so you're going to recognize a false teacher because they're going to run around saying they're Israel when they don't look like any of these people in all of the kingdoms of the world and who were captured by the Egypt and enslaved to the Egyptians and the Assyrians, et cetera, et cetera. And they're going to teach that the scripture is just another book or not really reliable. Then they're going to say they're Israel, even though you can only be confirmed as Israel by scripture. It's the paramount and only book. And then they're going to call everything that is Egyptian. And now the Egyptians were the captors of Israel and the first enslavers of Israel and the current enslavers of Israel. The Amorites are. They're Egyptians. Okay? Because... They were ruling in Egypt at the worst time of Israel's captivity there. So if you have teachers teaching you all this, claiming to be Israel, yet denying the book, you're completely being deceived, and so are they. And usually it's probably uh, Masons, you know, or Jesuits, or whatever you want to call them. It's not Israel. So let's get into what the people look like, and head shape and everything, because all these things are actually important. And that's how you identify a Mason. The Masons think that one people or those books are the most inferior religion on the planet. And that's how you can recognize a satanic religion. It denies scripture. Or teacher. They deny scripture. So just, just to sharpen your wits a little bit. It's just like the fake Jews. They deny scripture, yet claim to be Jews. The book is the book about the people. If you're denying the book, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, you're not Israel. His people love his book. Okay, you can't consider yourself a teacher unless you know the book inside out. There's a lot of other channels that I refer to and look at, and but their teachings are not informed by the scripture or the Ruach HaKodesh. That's why I don't really mention them. I may just put a word here or them, and I'm grateful for what they provide. However, if it's not informed by the Ruach HaKodesh, you shouldn't consider them a teacher if they're not using scripture and they're not speaking by the Spirit. And the only way you get the Spirit is if you're in Yahusha. You can Look up the genealogies if you want. Try to tack everything together. But if you haven't got the spirit to give people revelation about the word by the spirit and then put history under that and always verbalize it as being less than scripture, then you wouldn't be a Hebrew. No Hebrew puts anything other than Yah himself above the word because the word is Yahusha. The word is Yah made flesh in action. So you're not going to be denying it. So let's get into this and we're just going to get into what is presented about the Hebrews and perhaps how they devised to change us and our culture and even our head shape to fit the image of themselves. So let's get into it. One of the key things that we notice is head shape for Africans, okay? And when we look at a lot of these videos by Kimuro Ahu, he just kind of says everybody looks the same and everybody's brothers and sisters and you know, everybody was there at once, and it seems to just conflate the identity of everybody. Like, for example, in Unexpected Faces in Ancient America, um, from the art of uh, terracotta pottery in pre-Columbian Central and South America. 
So you see all of these different kinds of faces. And then he's like, see, everybody was there. Yeah, everybody was there in the major empires, no doubt. But the subject is, who's, who are the Hebrews? Who are the Hamites? Who are the Gentiles? This is what the subject is. And honestly, I believe that the sons of Noah um, have similar looking looks, shaped heads, all kinds of things. Um, but the fallen tend to have a specific look. So here is the brain of the, um, the alien DNA, right? Which you find among, it says um, that you found it in Peru among the natives there. So this is not the black people there. This is maybe the Hamites. And um, I'm just going to And the reason why you really see it is because we're going to look at some, some of the drawings that they tend to show. Um, so it says that Paracas in Peru contain this alien DNA that other people can't, don't have. And this is these big headed human like creatures. So, um, it says no ancient Peruvians didn't have alien DNA. But there are a portion of people who have these kinds of skulls. Right? So when we tend to look at the illustrations, the paintings and stuff, we find that they have these head shapes, you see, here. And in this video, um, this guy who's edging more towards having this head shape, right? You see, he's got a bit more of that head shape. And um, so he's from a tribe in Massachusetts. Now this is the Negro type head shape, okay? And so there, there's like, I don't want to get too much into this because you know, sometimes it go off, but I honestly think this, we know the Raphaim and everything tended to have these elongated skulls or the big light bulb shaped head. Um, so when he's talking about these people, like, so for example, you see in this illustration as well, you see there's a variety of people with this long head shape. These are a lot of the Caucasians who are there. Um, and there are reports of blonde people, okay? And there was a, a page I found with these people with blonde hair that, that Columbus discovered with long blonde hair. So from Lost Tribes of the Promised Land. There is a description of something like blonde people in the kind of South Pacific region, but it's not you know, what you would think. Bacchio's narr narrative suddenly finds new life toward the end when it describes four islanders who had been kidnapped. The vivid description suggests that the author had seen them with his own eyes. The four men whom they had carried away were young and beardless, and they had handsome faces, and they were nothing but a, had wore nothing but a sort of apron made of cord from which they hung a number of palm and reed fibers of one and a half or two hairs breadth, which formed an effectual covering. They were uncircumcised. Okay, they were un circumcised. So that means they weren't Shemites. Okay. Their long light hair, their long light hair veiled their bodies down to the waist and they went barefoot. These men were spoken to in several languages, but they understood none of them. They were not taller than their captors, but were robust of limb and courageous and very intelligent. When spoken to by signs, they replied in the same manner, like mutes. They sang very sweetly and danced almost as well as Frenchmen. I don't know. Maybe that's when black people were French. <laughs> right? That's, uh, that would be uh, Queen Mary, when Queen Mary was there and she married into the black family in France. They were gay and merry and much more civilized than many Spaniards. They absolutely refused wine and only drank water, wheat and barley, and ate plenty, as well as cheese and meat, which were abundant on the islands and of good quality. 
Although there were no oxen, camels, or asses, there were plenty of goats and sheep and dogs. And they were shown gold and silver. So this is this just like this one obscure little mansion um, and how to use them. And they show remarkable faithfulness and honesty. For if one of them received anything good to eat before tasting it, he divided it into portions which he shared with the rest. Marriage was preserved among them. The married women wore aprons like the men, but the maidens went quite naked without consciousness of shame. So it looks like there were some lighter skinned people on the islands um, who were blonde. And that's reported, you know, historically as, as well. So this is, again, um, when we look at a lot of these paintings and stuff, you're often seeing this head shape, okay? It's this tiny head shape, okay? This tiny kind of a head shape. And this is kind of a picture of the center of the earth being Egypt, right? And really, this might have even been when, when uh, Joseph ruled, right? Because it looks like, now we're looking from the circle of the earth, we're looking from the top down, Yah's perspective, so... The south is at the top and the north is at the bottom. So that would be Europe. This would be Africa. This over here would be the west. This would be kind of the east, right? And so if this is or, or north on the cross map, okay? So this might be Japheth. This might be Ham. And this might be Shem, even though they drew him with this funny head. But... But this is what they really, in Egypt, in Mitzrahim, in North America, they really valued this tiny head, okay? This tiny head. So you do see it in a lot of these, these paintings and stuff, these ancient representations. Like, notice how you, you actually, so here in these Maya paintings here, from the ancient Maya world by Lynn Foster is where we're getting... The source of some of these images and so we see these long heads again with most of the Caucasians and then we see um, these other people which could be Sh Shemetic or Yephetic, Japheth, Shem or Ham, right? Because they would have a more common head but these are the, the Raphaim and the Nephilim, look at the size of his head and you just think in terms of the Far Side comic or something and you, you imagine this kind of a head shape, right? And you see it here with these leaders, and you see it with the Native Americans, the Hamites. So these ones have dreadlocks. These ones, their hair is straighter. Um, and, you know, I'm actually open to the idea that some of the Native Americans, especially Mohawks, because there's Mohab Bay, V is often B in Hebrew, and it's never W. So, um, I mean, it's never V. So, like, V is often pronounced with a Wa in Hebrew. Um, so, Mahawe Desert, or Moha. So, um, Ak means brother, right? Mohawk. So, the Moha, Moha Bites. So, there's a, a possibility that the, Mo, the North American Indians, some of them may be Moabites. Or... Very likely, as you can see from all these images and with this aquiline nose, they are Hamites. And you see these darker Hamites with the dreadlocks and they've still got this tiny kind of head. And you see these other guys, which I believe these guys often in the leopard print are going to be um, Edomites. Um, you see even the Edomites, the Fulanis and stuff and the Nigerians, they often wear the leopard prints. And same with... Um, and that was symbolic of Alexander the Great, and I think the Greek Empire that became eventually the, the Greek Empire and Ptolemy and stuff. So yeah, so you so this kind of tiny head top is very distinguishing for the Hamites, for the Native Americans, for the Canaanites. So if Sidon is is China or or Canaan or Sino. You're going to have this flatter type head. 
um, or you're going to have, see, we go here again, we see this head shape again here, this heavy, heavy forehead. And see, these are um, Peruvian Incas, so-called. And these are illustrations of them. And I think this is from um, <sighs> possibly America or the, the archives um, of, what's his name, J something W archives. And this is, you see, they've got the big forehead and you see that's very common here. This is from a uh, German museum. And this is how the Germans very strongly represent themselves. And you see it, this is the Nephilim race. So you see the same forehead, right? And you can even see it amongst the Romans. A lot of the Roman statues, the statues of, but the faces, the heads of the actual, I guess we would call them Hamites with these big white hats on, they don't have that lump in the middle of their forehead and that really broad forehead. The Romans, a lot of the Roman statues, the statues of the Roman gods and leaders, they have this very, you know, the statue of David, the very famous statue of David. Again, it's a very heavy forehead. Here, and we'll go here. See, this is typical. This very heavy forehead, a smaller jaw. Okay, heavy, heavy forehead. Still a strong jaw, but not not the dosi mesophallic, not the, the one that you will more often see with Africans. Okay, and you see it with Europeans too. Um, but the balance, the symmetry is not there. The heavier forehead is definitely there with um, the Romans, etc. So I, I did want to show this guy again because he's a tribe from, from a tribe in Massachusetts and he's probably closer to the original Hamite. And so we see that head shape again. And now when we look at some of these ancient images, okay, this is a tribe. These are the Hungarians. And notice how when we look at the Hungarians, so these are Asians, we see this head shape, okay, the same thing, oblong head shape, oblong, oblong. Now there are tribes in Africa who, who um, will wrap their heads so this baby it looks like they're torturing this poor baby there's so many images um, this is again germanic and see this is natural how he's styling his hair you see it again with the indigenous americans okay and this is what you have to look at when you're looking at all these images okay and i honestly believe like anthropology was all about telling lies about the africans because so just don't forget this head shape because it's very specific. Um, so when we do these searches, yeah. Um, for example, this one, we end up with this head wrapping, head shape thing going on, right? But when you look at the tribes that this is coming from, you find out that, see all the head wrapping, it's, I honestly believe they made them do this. And I have to tell you why. Because it's not, see, it's not extremely common with her. And these are manga betu. So bet means house, um, people. So this is, Manga Betu deformation to crane. So this is deforming the head. Now look at her head. That's a very typical African-American or Jamaican head. These are, these are Bantu's people, but they've had them deform their heads. Okay, so maybe these are their first spiritual practices. They forgot who they are. Um, and, um, you know, that's what the scripture said would happen. They would take on these traditions. But look at this poor little girl. Like, you look at these pictures, and I, I want to say it's almost like they had them do this or paid them to do this. I don't know. 
because here we have this, we have a man nursing a baby. I don't think that's a woman. Okay? It's just weird. It's like they're, they're perverting this culture, right? That's what I think this is. So here are the images of the head wrapping. You look at this woman, she looks extremely unhappy. Look at the baby's head is swelling. His head is being squeezed, her head is being squeezed, and her eyes, to the point her eyes are popping out, and she looks very unhappy. I just, um, but you look at the, it says, skull of the Koskimo Indian, Vancouver Island. Okay, so this was a very Canaanitish or Asian type, Canaan type Khan, this North America is a land of Khan, right? Canaan, because this is the land of Ham. This is what it says that this was the head type for here. I'm going to see if I can drag this over to my display here. So, um, and there's, you know, anthropology was all about redefining and putting all this conjecture upon the identity. See, her head looks pretty normally shaped, and that's it. She's got a very common face you find among Jamaicans, African Americans, etc. Africans. This just seems very abnormal. And maybe anthropology is interfering or something like that. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. But look, this poor baby looks like there it's being tortured she's it i'm calling the baby it's she's a she but what's what they're doing to this baby it just seems and that's i think this is her when she's grown up the face looks very similar um but that's not normal that's not a normal head shape that's from head binding okay so we can't confuse this with true genetic head shapes okay all right so it, it, this is artificial it says here artificial all right so artificial head deformation now this is a mixed race um, woman so we can't really count her as a typical Asian but when you look at a lot of the, the heads uh, the Asians do tend to have a slightly flatter head again mixed race girl here it's part black uh, so we can't count her. Same with her. Looks part black. Um, but you do tend to have this. And this is not... Um, she's got a very beautiful head shape. And and this is what I mean. There's an aspect of it that I think is no noetic, like coming from Noah. Because it's symmetry and balance. People say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But uh, I don't believe that. I believe that Yah created us with symmetry. Because when you see a beautiful person, you just can't deny it. They're beautiful. And it's usually all this sym symmetry and smooth skin and beautiful shape and eyes. But Hasetan's children are so mutated, he calls them beautiful, right? And we're mutated by sin. So he thinks that's beautiful, right? That we're mutated by sin. But once again, we see all these head shapes, right? And so... What they were they try to say is that the German head shape is so let's just move this out of the way. Just move it here. The German head shape is supposed to be this um, cephalic head shape. Okay, here's some of these other ones. Again, these are Asians. Um, so they're saying this is a German caucasoidal head shape, okay, caucasoid, okay? But when you look at, and like I said, I think there's an element of noatic head shape, the symmetry, right? But if you look, this is closer to her head shape, right? Look at that. It's like almost identical, right? So, and this... So I think this is the original African head shape. And when you look at, uh, so this is called, sorry, I just have to get the name of it. 
docicephalic. And so you'll hear Benaya Israel talk a lot, a lot about this. This is the docicephalic head. So this belongs to the um, Abantus, but they say this is Caucasoid, but it's not. Um, and the brachycephalic. But you will see it with the Caucasians do have this as well. And that's why I'm like it. It can be Noahic, like the Noah Noah's um, head shape. And I think it's in Shem, Ham, and Japheth, but it's the most common in the Bantus people and the more African people because the Hebrews kept, kept the genetic line, right? They kept the Adamic image, right? Said Noah was perfect in his generations. And so this is this head, and we see it fits perfectly over her skull. Okay, this is the same woman here. This is front view, profile view. So we see again, it fits perfectly over her head. Okay. And um, we even see it like with this little girl. Again, it's the same kind of head shape. She's turned three quarters, so it's kind of hard to do it. This is a perfect profile. When we look at this guy, um, they say, uh, they're, again, they're saying this is a docicephalic Germanic head shape. Well, the Germans were black originally right and so um so here we go again this fits better here with this guy's head shape right right so um and then there's this other one and this one so this is the same one again um, the bra brachycephaly, which I think also fits with the Africans, but you see it fits better on this German guy, right? This Caucasian guy is this brach brachycephaly. Of course, these are the skulls and bones that they have all across Europe left over from the Inquisition and buried beneath catacombs and stuff in Israel as well. Same genetics, same head shape. In these videos and they're kind of saying oh they're they see it's all the same people no you see the head type repeated over and over among the native canadians the canaanites and they have because they have this mixing with the fallen angel seed and so you know no this is not the caucasian head they say it's germanic well this because they were hiding history this is the true germanic head the germans were black right? They were black originally. And so over here we have all of the Canaanitish people. And so this is something when you're looking at the reason why it comes to me is because I've done, I've been in the fashion industry for, you know, entertainment my whole life. Um, I did a lot of uh, photography, drawing, painting, cinematography. I would do realistic drawing. Like I could draw this woman with this kind of accuracy, almost photographic accuracy. And when you're drawing like that, or you do makeup on people and you look at somebody, the shape of an eye and how to bring, enhance it and those kinds of things, you get a sense of this stuff because so you, then you start to really notice. So this is them with their racial theories, trying to hide the identity of the Israelites. Like they flatten out his head. That's not even proper perspective. If you were going to draw this with proper perspective, you would have to add more here because there's certain um, dimensions and measurements to the human face and head that are just scientific and you find them in the geometry of the face. So this is has been truncated the top of his head. And so, of course, they compare him to a, to a um, gorilla, right? And then they say this is the do, the docifale face. I mean, look at the back of his head; it's completely flat, or it's more like what I showed you. The Romans look like. So when we look at these pictures again, here we see this. We see this head shape, the smaller top of the head. Okay, among the Hamites. Okay, so whether they're the Plains Indians, see once again smaller at the top right and flat we also see this this is more african but it can also be interpreted sometimes as asian it's asian if it's flat in the back but if it's african if it's rounded 
in the back. So I just want you to keep this in mind when you're watching all those videos and seeing these faces because, and look at your own people because the people of the diaspora have very specific faces and heads. So, so you see this one, I'm going to bring it to the front and then this is going to be my last one. Um, so they're saying here, this Mary Evans picture library, I don't know who that is, but anyway, that's where I got it from. See, it says German type, German type, British type. So who are the true Germans and the Brits? That's the diaspora. That is um, the people who fell by the sword and were led, scattered and led away captive into every land. And they tried to stay in their own lands. They went, they remained in the land of Shem for the most part, always, okay? Which is half the planet, so they had a long way to spread out. But, so I just want you to be aware of this and notice this, these are just kind of clay illustrations, but notice how they try to make them look black, but they're not. The features are very, see the thin lips, the pointy nose, the hooded eye, well, everyone has hooded eyes, especially the Hebrews, because they mixed in with Canaan. But they try to make these people look black. And even with the coloring, but they're not. That's just how they colored it. This head shape is not typical for the diaspora. And so it is more typical for the Canaanites, the Hamites, and um, the Caucasoid Neanderthal head shape. That's where it's coming from. Okay? So just keep that in mind. When you're watching all these videos, because... You can watch some of these videos and, you know, they got you thinking that, that, you know, ups, down and see the head shape again. This is, and what is this described as? I'm going to, you're going to see as Negro in this book. This is the Negro head shape. Okay. And that's what they call themselves in Spain, the Negroes. This is Negroid again. You see the symmetry, okay? I mean, our people did all kinds of crazy stuff. They still do today. You know, they get, they want to do, see, excellent prototype of Negro girl. You see the head. This is how my sister's head is shaped. And we would, like I always talk about, we would say there's like a bean dip in the back. And, and so you have this, you know, large brain, basically. I don't know how else to put it. That's what it is. And the symmetry. Okay, so he, he shows a lot of this stuff and, you know, you just don't want to confuse it. I don't want to judge him too harshly. Sometimes I think he has good intentions and other times I think this is just a huge deception because this next video he's going into the, into the idea that, you know, these are the real Israelites, right? He's gone back to his initial premise that the Indians are the true Hebrews. Well, they haven't been led away captive into all nations and they could not be enslaved and they could not give birth in slavery. So we know the Hebrews would be led away captive into all nations and, you know, bread and um, et cetera, et cetera. In the four corners, you don't see these people in the four corners of the earth. You just don't. The Native Americans, but you see our people in the four corners of the earth. So, and mixing in with everybody too, right? Redeeming everybody, giving everyone an up, a genetic upgrade, right? So I just wanted to share that with you because there's another video too that he does and it, it, it's supposed to be this really groundbreaking kind of thing. And the thing is, it just goes all the way back to Asia. And one of the key habits that the Canaanites have in North America is to rub their body all over with bear fat. A bear is basically a dog. And Torah is very clear that you're not supposed to use any fat of the animal. You're not supposed to consume it in any way by rubbing it on your whole body you're consuming it. There's no mention of bear fat anywhere in scripture, not even in satanic rituals described in the Bible amongst those who are sacrificing to Molech. 
There's all kinds of talks about oils and frankincense that we know that black people use all kinds of oils on their skin and never bear fat. He goes all the way back to Asia and he's trying to say that the people of the Congo, black people are really, you know, the Egyptians. And so this is, this is nothing of um, the truth that the scripture speaks of. So this is this, he goes into this whole breakdown. This actually looks like fringes on a cloth. Okay, but he goes into this whole breakdown of, of um, some of the objects and stuff that were found in this um, Olmec excavation that was done. And it's very clear. You can tell the most ancient artwork is the largest and lasts the longest. And so again, here we have this head shape. Well, this might be pressed a little flat there. But um, you have this head shape, right? And, you know, the strong cheekbones and everything. So it's, I believe these were the Hebrews. But then he adds in all these Asian sculptures into this exhibit. And the bit, but the biggest, longest lasting, most indestructible stone ones are the Olmecs. But then what's added in is all these Asians. And they're smaller, they're different stones. There's discussion of, of all this jade being there. Meh, you don't really hear a lot of that generally in, in excavating um, the lands and stuff, but it go, yeah, it goes into, there's a lot of discussion about this hidden um, gathering of people. See, look, very Asian, right? Totally, like this was all supposed to be found together, totally Asian. And again, you're going to get the head shape. Um, but, and so then there's this gathering of all these people and notice the small top of the head, the Asian eyes. Okay. And this was, discovered at this very same Olmec excavation and it seemed like he literally says it seemed like it was covered up like I and from this description he gives it sounds like it was placed there and covered up but he doesn't say that he's like oh it's just like they wanted someone to find it what an exciting discovery well no the truth is is that they probably planted it there right these all look like Asian people and it's the small head shape again okay so, I mean, it, it could be from that area, but they're moving it more so, so towards, look, this is looking very Chinese, right? Right? The posture and everything. But these are not the largest and longest lasting sculptures. They don't seem to have a consistency in the materials. These are just things I noticed just by just plainly observing with my eye. It just is not the same artistry. It's not that doesn't seem like the same time frame. I mean, I studied fine arts. I mean, I have a degree in film and television, and I did fine arts and um, drawing, painting. One thing I didn't do was sculpture, but I had to write all these art history essays. And so you just get used to looking at this stuff. You notice the texture and weight of the stone and the color of it. And then you see it comparatively in relationship to other things, and it's not matching. It's not matching with that old neck head. So the old necks, I believe, are the Hebrews. Old neck, old, the old seed, the original seed. A-L-N-A-C, the original set apart seed, all neck, right? N is for new. And this flatness of the back of the head, I don't even think is the, the real construction of the head. I think it's just that it was up against a building or a wall. You get the impression that if it was fully filled out, it would be like that. You would have to add this right if the jawline is here right you would have to add this so um and you know we we i have a friend who actually looks like this who's a, who's a hebrew from jamaica he, like i say in my other videos this could be aga Beishan. this could be the black giants and so the head is flat you know, so we we don't exactly know who these people always are. These could could be Israelites or that it could be Agabashan. 
looks like this guy. He's a, a fighter, a kickboxing champion. And that's his face. And his head shape is fine. It's not like that. So this is this discovery they made. So again, this is the Asians inserting themselves, okay? Inserting themselves in this history. They may have been here because obviously these are the Canaanites, right? But not preserved in amongst the Hebrews. This is more the Hebrews. Um, it's, it's almost, this is what I mean, like the difference between Mexican, a descendant of Khan, versus Mexica, a descendant of the set-apart people. So Ka means heights or set apart wall okay and these guys were walled out that's what the great wall of china like i said was about moses had it constructed to separate the canaanites from the moses that moses that's why they talk about wall street the wall the chinese never built the wall the israelites did to wall the giants out okay so may Yah bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine on you. May Yah be gracious, give the light of his countenance and give you peace. Shalom. Supa Aleph Yasharel Yahuwah And may the Ruach HaKodesh lead you into all truth and show you things to come. I'm giving recognition to the Most High I'm giving thanks and praises for the many blessings I receive from His favor.